last session, bro. Man, you know I'm a teacher. <laughs> 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 you know, man, I don't really <laughs> know, <laughs> man. Sessions, <laughs> man. That's session, man. No matter what I was like, I think. <laughs> <laughs> And what it do, you know, it's your brand that's screwed up quick, man, and bring them up if they want. I met Screw, uh, probably was about 14, 15, maybe 15, 16, something like that. I used to hang out at the after hour club. Uh, and he was the DJ in that club. At the time, I didn't know his name. So I used to go to this club, and every time I walk in the club, I would like go and speak to the DJ or whatever. So me and Screw kind of came cool like that. And then by me coming in the club all the time, he was, I, he was playing a song one time and I was like, uh, man, that song jamming or whatever, right? And it was a song called uh, Bust Down. I mean, it was a song called Nasty Bitch by Bust Down. Bust Down here, old school artist out of Miami, whatever. This was around the time I think uh, Two Lock Crew was kind of hot or whatever. They had just came out of the world. But uh, he used to play this song called uh, A Nasty Bitch by an artist called Bust Down. And once me and him had kind of like spoke to each other, I still didn't know his name. We spoke to each other, whatever, then it's like every time I came in the club, he would just play that song, I guess as a, just a, like speaking to him and saying what's up or whatever, you know what I mean? And then that was pretty much it. So after that, the club had got shut down. Cause like I said, it was the after hours. So you know how crazy after hours. So the club got shut down, so I didn't I didn't see school for maybe about five or six months. And then um, a partner of mine had a played this tape for me, you know what I'm saying? And he was like, the tape was slow. And I was like, man, that, that, that tape sounds good. Like, you know what I'm saying? I was like, man, that's that's creative. Whoever did that. And he was like, man, my homie did this for me. And then he was like, I'll take you by his house or whatever, and he can make one. So I go by school apartment or whatever, but at the time he was saying it's some apartments or whatever. And when I pull up over there, he come outside and I'm like, man, I know him. You know what I'm saying? I was like, man, that's my partner, DJ, this after hour. I was like, you know, we got to talk about the after hour being shut down and all that. And the rest was history. That's pretty much from the step from, from how I met him and how he started doing takes with me. If you think about it, music and cultures they kind of take the way i feel like it's like with everybody doing it now it's just because of this day and age that we with me it's more you know everything is so accessible to people you know you hear everything you learn everything so quick like you know what i'm saying i figure like you know by social media and the internet and all everybody so connected it don't take but a few people to make something popular real quick so i, I figure like it took so long from it being on the tapes, because if you think about it, when we talking about that on them tapes, and that was early 90s, you know what I'm saying? That's like 25, almost 30 years ago. And the reason why it kind of got so popular so quick was because of the internet. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, it took so long because we were on tapes. It wasn't on internet. So it, them tapes had to travel from screw trunk to the world, which was probably never going to happen like that. You know what I'm saying? But as soon as the internet hit, it became real, real popular. Like real, and I think that's just a, as far as it being worldwide popular like that and everybody talking about it because of social media. You know what I'm saying? I started, I mean, I, when I, when I, uh, I want to say like 2002, I was incarcerated from 99 to 2001. So when I came home in 2002, I would just listen to screw tapes, you know what I'm saying? And then by me listening to the screw tapes, a lot of people was just like come up to me like, man, you and screw so close and you knew him so, you know what I'm saying? Knew him so well, I was like, yeah, but I wasn't really interested and still wasn't interested in doing the whole DJ thing. But you know, everybody was like, man, we, we need these tapes, we need these, you know what I'm saying? We want to get new views and we need somebody to do the tapes. So me just thinking like, you know, I'm like, man, I watch screw do this so much, you know what I'm saying? But I him actually teaching me, he was teaching. You feel what I'm saying? I was like, I watched him so much, man. I literally could know what he was thinking when he was doing them, you know what I'm saying? So that's kind of how I got into it. So like people stayed asking, people stayed asking. Me. So, you know, I, I just, man, I ain't gonna lie. I just went and bought some equipment, man. You know, oh, wow. at, the time, at the time, 
you know, I was I was in the streets, yo, know, whatever, you know, hustling. So money wasn't really an object at the time. That's kind of how I got into. It. I I was financially at a point to where I could throw fifty. I mean, you no, know, five thousand dollars away. So that's pretty much how I came about, man. I had the money to go buy the equipment, and I started practicing. They went from like two thousand two to now. I just be I'm still practicing. You know what I'm saying? I'm not perfect. So. That's, that's been my journey, man, you know what I'm saying? And my, my end goal is just to continue making sure that what he started live on, you know what I'm saying? As long as I can, you know what I'm saying? That's just, that's the whole goal, man, to make sure. And I, I really, I want people to understand the true meaning of it, you know what I'm saying? Because it's so kind of like watered down. People don't really know the true meaning of making a screw tape. My goal is to try to get everybody to understand the real meaning of making, you know what I'm saying? Not just because the tape is slowed down or... I want to listen to this person tape this, you know what I'm saying? The whole true meaning of making screw tape is doing your own tape, having your own music. The tape is supposed to be personal, you know what I'm saying? That's how we started out. Like when we started making tapes, it wasn't about listening to this person tape or listening to that person tape. Because me, honestly, most of the screw tapes, I've never heard any of them, you know what I'm saying? It took me like like the most popular screw tape, June 27. Uh, Man, I popped down here as June 27 until like 2009, 2010 was my first time ever listening to the tape. Right. Because it wasn't my tape. I made so many tapes of my own, which was, that's how we was. Everybody made their own tape. You listen to anybody that really made tapes with school, they gonna tell you they never really heard these other tapes. You know what I'm saying? And the reason why the other tapes got popular is because school couldn't make a tape for everybody. When school was alive and he was doing it, he was the only one. You know what I'm saying? Like. We were now going this person, that person, that person. It was Screw. That was it. So, like me, I can get, I can do a tape for everybody. Screw couldn't do that. You know what I'm saying? There was no way he could do that because it was he was the only one. With me, it's a million people do it. So people had their trust to be like, ah, oh, I just get this person tape for it. You know what I'm saying? I just do it like that. You know what I'm saying? But back in the day, Screw was doing tapes specifically for that person. That was the meaning of it for you to have your own songs. Do your own tape, you know what I'm saying? And so I'm just trying to make people understand that because I still feel like they just don't understand it. People really think nah, I do. People really think that screw music is just anybody like you got to accept what anybody playing. You know what I'm saying? And that's not what it is. You know, you get your own thought, have your own music. You know what I'm saying? And like your own music. You know what I'm saying? The music that you like, you you don't have to satisfy nobody else. That's your music. If you still like street music, listen to street music. You feel what I'm saying? If you like dancing music, listen to dance music. A lot of people these days, because of the internet, in other ways, you know, we we so easy to follow. You feel what I'm saying? So, whatever kind of music come out, it, it's going to get a mass following. Just because of the internet and so accessible that people are today. But like, back in school, that's why a lot of the songs now, people don't know what they are on school television. Because we stayed in our own zone. Everybody listened to their own music. It was never, I don't like this song because you don't like every song on the tape because it's your tape. You know what I'm saying? Now people listen to screw tape, they skip through songs. I don't like the song, I don't like the song because you didn't get the tape right. You're supposed to make your own tape and let it be that. Man, with the screw stories. I, I mean, honestly, that just came up like a thought. You, you know how you, man, I don't know if you be like getting your zone and you just be thinking stuff just popping your head. That basically how, that, how it happened, you know what I'm saying? And I was like, when I thought of it, I was like, these are stories that I can tell that can't nobody else tell. You, right. you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times I have to realize how lucky I was or, you know what I'm saying? How blessed I was to be able to be in school presence as much as I did because he was a friend of me, so I really don't look at him as so called the world look at him. You know, I just looked at him as school. You know, everybody look at him as DJ school. You know what I'm saying? And I just, I never really got a grasp on looking at him like that, but I'm, you know, just trying to get around to it. And I just realized that I'm, I'm a rare breed, man. I'm really a rare kind. Like, it's, it's not too many people that can say they actually sat in the wish group time and time again and made these tapes. You know what I'm saying? And then from the fact that so many people that can say that have already passed away. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah. it's so many people like the legends, like Mo and Pat, and I, like they own most of the screw tapes. You, you feel what I'm saying? 
even though I made more tapes than them, they still own a lot of the tapes. And by them not being here, they can't tell their story. You feel what I'm saying? So I'm here. I feel like I'm here. I can tell my story. You know, it's not nothing that somebody else can do for me. Or it's not nothing that somebody can steal. You know what I'm saying? Because can't nobody wake up tomorrow and say, hey, man, I did a tape with Screw. You know what I'm saying? Just like it, it don't add up. So I'm able to, you know, I'm trying to cherish that and soak it in and just let that be known. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't have any rap tape, man. I mean, the story behind my tapes is uh, my house caught on fire in 98. I had all my tapes in one spot, you know, like a little locker like type thing. Even though know, like I had a little tool kit. It really was a tool kit, that's really what it was a tool kit, but I had took the shells out of it. Yeah, that's you know how what I had my brother. And um and uh I had all my tapes in there, man. All my tapes in one spot, man. When I I was kind of five pretty much lost all of them, you know what I'm saying? But like after that, like I had a few tapes that I kinda like had got again from the school. And then the ri after that, the original copy of Nine Nine Live was like the only original copy that I still had. You know what I'm saying? But that was like the last tape that I did with Screw before I got locked up. So when I had that tape, I gave it to a museum because I felt like it was more important for people to see the tape than for me to just have it in my closet. So, you know, it was my last original tape. Pretty much you like know what I'm saying? Yeah. All the other tapes. They'll, they'll be considered original great tape. Like, I actually got the tape from Screw, but they wasn't that first copy. You know what I'm saying? Like, the 99 Live, that was the first copy. That was the really original, original tape. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, when Screw slowed it down and took it out the deck, that was the tape that I gave him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Now, I done had tapes that, like, you know what I'm saying? If the tape pop or somebody steal the tape and I, you know, get it again from Screw, but that's not the first copy, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's still an original break tape, it still came from Screw, but it wasn't that first copy. Now, yeah. the tapes that wasn't the first copy, I still have like, hmm, probably about 10 tapes, you know what I'm saying? I still have my uh, Screw You Haters, I still have In Your Ear. Uh, a lot of them didn't have names on them, I still have like two, I have two tapes that didn't have a name on them. Uh, you know, I just said uh, some of my old tapes, you know what I'm saying? They ain't like 10 of them. And, uh, like I say, they just in the closet, though. I, I, I probably don't even remember where they at. I had to look for them, but I got them. They're just not that first copy, you know what I'm saying? They will bring some great tape, but just not that first one out the day. Make sure you follow me on all social media, all platforms man at suc music or facebook twitter snap whatever you want man just at suc music and uh you can get at me man suc music.com that's what it is i'm simple man i ain't hard you know what i'm talking about